Welcome, everybody, to the very first live VOD edition of Rift Happens. This is episode three. We're so excited that not only do you get to hear our amazing voices, you get to see our mediocre faces all at the same time. Uh, I'm Justin Tarbert, joined by my esteemed co-host, Ronnie B. Ronnie, happy Tuesday. We did it. Yeah, man. <laughs> oh, happy Wednesday. No, it's happy Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> We've been doing them Tuesdays every week. I know we got it. We got into a habit. No, I'm, this is so exciting, man. I am, you know, we had the pre-roll. We were kind of chit-chatting about it a little bit. We got our own little kind of hype man in our brain right now, getting us hyped up for this. Cause uh, you know, you guys, you know, the viewers, the listeners, I should say listeners now viewers, uh, you guys wanted uh, more formats. So here we are, we're going to do this and put ourselves out there. And I'm so excited about, you know, breaking these, breaking these games down we have so much action this week uh it's gonna be hype justin thanks for having me yeah we're using so many tools right now too uh as you can see as uh ronnie's uh camera there started to pixelate so we got some some great action there it's not you yeah. it's uh it's the bandwidth so we're gonna no, that was intentional we're gonna, that was intentional <laughs> we're gonna get into this thing so before we go too much further we're gonna just introduce and, and welcome everybody this is a coach rivals 
podcast. If you don't know much about Coach Rivals, we are a collection of high school and collegiate esports coaches that have really come together to push uh, Scholastic Esports forward. You can find more about Coach Rivals at coachrivals.gg. Just use that link that is uh, kind of right above us over there. Without further ado, uh, let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be focusing on uh, recapping the week three action uh, that took place in Coach Rivals Season 2, our League of Legends league, and then as well as uh, get a little bit of a patch uh, rundown, a patch preview uh what's happening there ronnie you may want to like disable your webcam and then reactivate it and see i'm not really oh, I'm sure still, if, uh... i'm still pixel man okay hang yeah on. you're pixel man hey there <laughs> it is uh you're back in all your glory i yes. like it so so this is one of the the cool things we get to experience is all the headaches of dealing with uh live vod production so um thank you all for this amazing idea that we're gonna struggle through as we go through this <laughs> yeah this is episode three of of you know, rift happens, but it's episode one of uh, you know this experience. So uh, live troubleshooting, I love it. This is great. So the uh, our friends that are going to be on their favorite podcast platform listening on, they're uh, they're not going to get to see all of this. So we're able to hear the chatter back and forth. Maybe we can edit some of that out before we get into it. But uh, either way, if you see on the screen, here are the standings through two weeks of Coach Rivals. Uh, we before we got into these previous matches, these were the standings before our our week three matches took place. As we saw a two way tie for first between Just Good Enough and Team Coach Diff sitting at two and zero. Oh. Death Cat for two. <laughs> Death Cat for Tootie is not the name of the team. <laughs> uh, it's Death Cat for Cutie. Uh, yes. Tied with Team Tragedy and third with one and zero. Oh, Death Cat for Tootie. Uh, every time mm. if they when they lose, you call them Death Death Cat for Tootie. Uh, <laughs> tied at <laughs> tied at fifth place, we have Immortals and Hotline Ping sitting at zero oh and one, and then tied at seventh, Spawn of Baron team on the right zero oh and two. So uh, let's see if I cancel and break. Yeah, you're you're all picked. You're Mister Pixel again. Uh, oh no! So, yeah, okay, man. hang on. Uh, you're let me, good. Let me mix the. So, uh, bam! I think I'm back. Deactivating and reactivating. Yeah, you're back. So, That's all right, here sure. we go. Let's go ahead and get into match number one. Was Spawn of Baron versus Team on the right? This is what Champ Select uh, looked like as we uh, got into that. A very uh, two beefy boys on the side of Spawn of Baron with the Amumu and the Orn, and then uh, on the other side, Team on the right. We ended up having Nautilus show up again, as we've had a lot of chatter about Nautilus. Uh, this past uh, season, as we've been uh, going through everything, and then, but we also have the Volley Bear and the Shin. So uh, three beefy boys on the side of Team on the right versus two beefy boys with Spawn of Baron. Uh, so uh, Ronnie, tell me your your thoughts on this one. Yeah, uh, I love that you bring up the beef right away. Right, it's um, it's something that you've you started to see at the pro level. Here, I'm gonna mess with my camera again. I, I, it doesn't like me today. Um, Okay, so yeah, so at the pro level, you're starting to see a lot of this stuff, right? Where you've got like three, maybe four kind of really big kind of tanky style characters that are protecting the ADC or protecting that last uh, carry style champion on your team. And you're starting to see it here at the uh, the coach rivals level as well, right? So, uh, you know, kind of the pro scene mirroring the uh, amateur scene, I guess you could say. And I love to see it because it works, right? It's a it's a, a composition that's easy to execute with a very low chance of, uh, you know, variance. Essentially, if you just kind of do your job, it, you're going to have a pretty good job, a pretty good time uh, for the most part in the game. And we saw this from, uh, from Team on the Right, especially with, uh, you know, Shen coming in big, I think was the big difference in this one uh, in general, because we've seen a lot of uh, AP style champs from Magus Dave. First couple of games, uh, he was playing, uh, I think it was Morgana game one, and then it was Vagar game two. And uh, you see him come in with the Shen this week. It's obviously something that they had been talking about. They really wanted to make a, a, an emphasis on having a traditional top lane style champion and it really i think really kind of helped them uh in a lot of phases of the match you saw it come up big some big shen ultimates here and there um you know without breaking the whole game down uh just at a glance here uh, i really like to see just uh, uh you know a more traditional style team composition uh from both teams 
Yeah, and you know, you and I are kind of old school players, so we this is like a bread and butter League of Legends team composition. I mean, you, yeah. you just like you said, you draft tanky front line, you have uh, these scaling uh, ADC champs. So we got Jinx and the Cogmaw, both want to you know shoot really fast and just do a ton of damage. Obviously, Jinx getting her hyper resets, and then Cogmaw just just shredding uh with his uh with his w and doing the percent uh damage so uh yeah it's it's standard comps compositions nothing particularly difficult to execute and so this is great and i like that you sh shout out Majesty. dave um we're bringing in the shin i think that was really good i think enchanters can work in the top lane but then you kind of pigeonhole the the rest of your lanes to be able to fill that role that top lane uh, can typically provide for you Tip, t top lane you can you can run that top lane carry you can run a tank with a, you know some really hard engage but when you don't run uh, a tank in the top lane or you don't run hard engage in the top lane you're relying on your jungler or your support to fill that gap well then if your if your support or your jungler doesn't play hard engages or tanks well, you know, then you have a comp issue and a champion pool issue. So I really like uh, the adaptation that they made and the development and the growth um, that these teams are showing. So moving forward, we're going to reveal uh, the winner here and ended up turning out team on the right, pulled it off in 32 minutes and 37 seconds. And taking a look at the KDA, you can see uh, how big of an impact this Jinx had in the game uh ryan kind of break down what sort of things that you saw in this and and uh what helped lead you to or what lead led team on the right to to victory yeah team on the right first win and uh definitely a hard-fought victory these guys have been clawing away a couple of close games up to this point and uh you know now we're we're here they finally get the uh the camera angles <laughs> thanks a lot robbie he's calling us out in chat uh, yeah, no, I, I, I love watching this game because you could tell team on the right after losing week two uh, really buckled down and, uh, you know, credit to their uh, their team leader. Right. Their uh, their head coach of the coaches. Uh, oh, oh, I'm pixelated again. No, you're good. No, it looks great now. OK, cool. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, big shout out to uh, Will Win, Right. The Jinx player. Uh, really strong game. I think. Uh, about halfway through this one, you know, it was a 32 minute game, about 15, 20 minutes into it, Jinx was uh, like 1-0 and like 11 or 1-0 and 12 or something crazy like that. And it was it was really indicative of the style that they were trying to play. Get everybody into a good spot, make sure that Jinx is, is getting her, her kill credits or at least the assist credits and everyone gets a little richer and a little bit more beefy to keep her protected. Um, <clears throat> Right when the game started out, uh, you know, I, like I said, I like seeing uh, the, the Shen come out because it came up big. We had uh, a Shen ult like right at like the seven and a half minute mark that came up in the bot lane, turned a whole fight in the favor of team on the right. Um, First Blood did go over to the Orn initially um, as, uh, as he took down the Shen. So initially it was like, uh oh, this could be trouble, but... Uh, really quickly, uh, Majesty Dave turned it around. Really, really, really strong game from him overall in the top lane. Uh, MVP of this match, in my opinion, it was tough, right? Because you had the Jinx 9-1-17 just so, so far and away uh, really t taking over the game. But I had to give it to the Volley Bear. Can and Teach, Deathless, okay. the only character Deathless in this one. Really love seeing him come out with the, uh, the Volley Bear. He had a bounty on his head the entire game. Uh, he set up a lot of the bot lane um, initial kind of push that allowed them to get a lead. And when you get a lead over a champion like Kog'Ma, it's really tough for them to come back in, you know. So once they started to kind of go on that trend and they started getting that that lead uh, for for bot lane and getting those dragon stacks and all that, yeah, it was it was a, a pretty easy game from the about 20 25 minute mark. But up until then, it was really really close, Razor's Edge. And uh, yeah, I mean. Volley Bear, man, just barely beating out the Jinx for MVP, in my opinion. Yeah, and, and that's one of the tough calls, too, because you look at KDA and you look at CS, and you're like, oh, yeah, we, we got to give it to the Jinx. Um, but, you know, those carries are doing what they're – I mean, the Jinx is doing what Jinx is supposed to do. Jinx is supposed yeah. to have the high kills. 
you, you hate to see as an ADC, you hate to see 17 assists. Uh, because it means you're not yeah. getting going. It's even worse on a Draven, but um, you know, with a with the Jinx, it's not it's not bad. But you know, seeing uh, those numbers, you immediately want to give it to a carry. But when you look at what the team was around that carry that enabled the carry to do what the carry did. Uh, it's hard to ignore stuff like that. It's easy to overlook, but once it's pointed out, it's kind of hard to ignore. I, I, I'm i going to take a little bit more of a critical approach uh, this episode, and I may get some flame for this, and that's that's okay. Uh, I, I think I can handle it. Um, but but Ronnie's doing a great job of like breaking it down and you know win conditions and, and what ended up getting the team the edge. I'm going to take a little bit more of a different approach this week, and I want to look at um, maybe some things to offer uh, maybe a little more critical analysis. I think the shopkeeper hurt uh, Spawn of Baron. Uh, this, I think, shot, I think Boris, uh, I think <laughs> Boris got him. Uh, so when you look across at the items for Spawn of Baron, I was really surprised that we didn't see any plated steel caps come out. You know, that gives you, uh, if, if my memory serves me correctly, that's 12% less damage per auto attack uh, that the enemy is, you know, drilling into you. And this Jinx was so fed and had so much CS, had so many items, had the attack speed coming through uh, with, with the rapid fire cannon and the crits and, they had the L and she had the LDR. Um, I, you really need those plated steel caps. So I'm looking at the tanks. I'm looking at Orn. I think Orn probably would have been better off with the plated steel caps over Merc Treads because the Merc Treads, yeah, would be great to, you know, trying to get out of that some of that CC, maybe uh, uh, reduce some of the damage coming from the Cassidan. But the Cassidan, as big as the Cassidan was with 12, 8, and 10, had a lot of kills, had a lot of assists. The Cassidan was still relatively behind because of the CS differential. I mean, you just look at the difference uh, between the Cassidan and the Jinx. The Jinx was doing a majority of that work. Kasten still has assassination potential. I'm not downplaying that. But Jinx was a major, major threat here. And we don't see any plated steel caps coming through. I, I'm wondering if it would have been better for plated steel caps to be not only on the Orn, but, but also the Amumu. And I'm wondering if Vagar maybe shouldn't have gone Zanya's a little bit first. And that's a tough call for the, for the Vagar because with the Vagar, if you have enough damage... You just delete the Jinx. She doesn't do any damage to you anyway, so you just delete her. Um, so that's kind of where I'm, I, I'm, I know that was a tough call with the Vagar, but I think for the tanks, I, I, I'm kind of thinking that plated steel caps would have been great. Maybe uh, another thorn mail on the Orn uh, instead of just on the Amumu. But but either way, uh, that was something that that kind of jumped out to me. Uh, and I'm not saying that that necessarily prevented their winning, uh, but I think it could have uh, could have helped them deal with the Jinx a little bit more um as that so uh either way so uh there you go team on the right taking that victory in 32 37 let's move on to our next match that we had that night. we had so many matches we had five matches so we're going to kind of speed run through these so bear with us um we had team coach diff taking on M yordles coach diff sitting at one of the uh only undefeated teams in the league uh before the these matches came through they're sitting at two and oh and then M yordles sitting at uh oh and one uh, coming into this. So they had a double header tonight, but Immortals, they were bouncing back, you know, coming off of that uh, that tough uh, loss they had um, going, you know, 40-something minutes against Tragedy. Uh, but coming into this match, we do see some mix-up. We see the Viego coming through for Coach Diff, which Hernandez teaches has always been on that set. So they insta-lock the set first pick. It gets through band phase. And I, I think he's been practicing Viego. I think I've played with him a little bit in normal draft. And so I'm running the Viego. And then we see the Viego locked in. And that brings up this question. Okay, well, where is this? Where's the set going? Could set potentially go mid? Is, is Hernandez taking Viego? So a little bit of mix up there. And then over on Immortal's side, we have the Diana jungle come back. And, and Diana, I'm sorry, the Diana mid instead of jungle. So when Diana was picked in uh, red side, uh, R3, or I'm sorry, R2, that was, okay, is Diana jungle or is Diana mid? Diana have a huge band presence in our league so far. And then the Ramus gets locked in last pick. So that was, I think that was a really cool misdirection on the part of the Immortals, not letting them know, not revealing that Diana was mid. And then you do this, you know, kind of swap at the very end. It's like, haha, surprise, she's mid. And then now we have, you know, uh, the, the Armadillo coming in 
and jumping over walls and stuff. So uh, really cool uh, champ select here. Um, very similar Immortals with that standard comp, but then you look over at Coach Diff, uh, they brought the Karthus jungle, which is, we haven't seen that yet, but either way, yeah, really cool matchup. Uh, Ronnie, let's get your take on this one. Yeah, I mean, you said it You said it really well, right? You see the set come through, first pick. You know what a priority it is for Team Coach Diff. Uh, Hernandez teaches has been playing that incredibly well and uh, been getting huge leads for his team. So you see the set come through immediately, and Yordle says, all right, well, we're going to get the Diana, and we're going to have Garen, so that's going to be you know, our answer to the set. Well, guess what? The set's not going top. He's going mid, and we're going to pick Viego. So it was this kind of like seesaw match, even just during the pick ban phase. Really cool to see, uh, you know, those first three picks for each team reveal a lot about what they want to do as far as the game goes without revealing their entire composition. So I like that a lot. Uh, I also I like the bands, right? Because again, we see... Um, we see in uh, the second phase for Coach Diff, a Morgana ban comes through. We got a Nocturne ban. Nocturne's been a menace um, for, for several teams here in, in Coach Rivals, so really good ban there. Uh, and then on the other side, Immortals taking away a couple of picks that we haven't really seen as much of, right? The Zaya, the Elise, the Brand, uh, really kind of focusing on very specific things maybe they didn't want to deal with. So um, really like seeing some of these different strategies as far as the pick ban phase goes. Um, and I think both teams kind of got what they wanted, right? That last surprise pick. Ooh, we got the Karthus. Ooh, we got the Ramis. And, you know, it, it worked out for both teams in different ways. But, uh, uh, you know, eventually... Uh, didn't didn't work out for Immortals as well as it did for Team Coach Diff. Yeah, well done. So I, I was picking up on your transition there. I was like, ah, let me get the slide ready. I'm going to switch over. <laughs> uh, Coach Diff did end up taking this one. And at 36 minutes and 40 seconds, uh, you can see the the Karthus does. Karthus did what Karthus does. He farms and he presses R. But one of the things that was really cool about this one is we did see the rarely seen ganking Karthus. Uh, it was very early. I want to think it was like level four or something. Maybe even been level three. He shows up in the bot lane, drops the wall, and you know starts collecting those dark harvest stacks. Typically, you know, you Karthus really doesn't make an appearance in lane. He just kind of, you, you just see the Requiem start to come down and then you know you're in a whole lot of trouble. Um, so so either way, Karthus obviously uh, did really well. And then we, as you said, we had the, sw the switcheroo. Uh, Viego is top. Set ended up being mid. Uh, we still had a very uh, good bot lane showing uh, from Coach Diff. Coach Diff, um, no secret, they, they play weak side, bot side. Um, and so that um, that was really cool, and I, I'll talk a little bit more about that um, after I get your take on everything. And then over on the side of Immortals, Dinah didn't do didn't do bad. Dinah did well uh, in the mid lane, as well did uh, really everybody. And it was kind of uh, just it was kind of a tough going really for uh, for Immortals in that, of course, the top lane that Viego is very difficult to deal with. He starts getting his resets, and uh, just a really tough comp to 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 play into. Uh, without any sort of you know um, solid answer from Immortals in that, I think the Karthus really threw a curveball because it's he just has to avoid the Ramus. I mean, he can he can do that. Uh, and, you know, and Ramus is he's not a very good taunt target uh, either. So uh, either way, uh, let's see. What do you think? How do you think this one played out for us? Yeah, no, I I love your take. Uh, so initially, right? We I this is the game we cast, right? So we yeah. we kind of had. A little bit of uh, not insider knowledge, right? But we, we we knew how the outcome was. We we've we've watched every minute of this match, just like most of them. But this one, you know, you get a little bit extra when you cast them. So uh, right when we started this one, we were talking about uh, the Karthus and the Rambus kind of being each team's win condition, and it really kind of came down to yeah, Karthus getting getting pretty big. Uh, the, I like the call out about the the lane gank, right? He shows up in bot lane uh, about five minutes in, right, and Varus gets the first blood, but really, really funny looking gank where Karthus just kind of hovers towards you, puts a wall up. It's really funny looking, but it worked, and uh, I love to see it. And then he picks up a double kill at like six and a half minutes. Well, the first blood, the assist gold, netted him enough to go grab a dark seal. He runs top lane, gets a double kill. Now he's got four dark seal stacks at like six and a half minutes. <laughs> like, oh my goodness, this guy's going to be a menace. So uh, you can kind of imagine, right? Karthus had a pretty big impact on the game, 
Um, to your point, though, Diana, really, really impactful. Some huge plays, uh, especially in the mid portion of the game. Uh, some some big team fights that were not single handedly won by Diana, but definitely uh, the the fights were turned because of uh, you know perfectly timed ultimates on like three, sometimes even four members of uh, Team Coach Diff. Really, really well done from uh, from Immortals to kind of focus around Diana as kind of a win condition closer to later portions of the game. It, it really got close uh, towards the end there, and then Coach Diff pulled away with some really big team fights. Uh, there was like a uh, there was a big fight around the like 24 minutes in, just to give you an idea. I mean, it was 15 to 14 the KDA. It was like four towers to three, two dragons apiece. I mean, really, both teams were were we're pretty close at that point. Uh, but then right around the 26 minute mark, Karthus picks up a triple kill. They grab a Baron right before that. Uh, there's an ace at the same time, right during the, the Karthus triple kill, you know, they get, they get a full team ace. Dragon soul follows that. So it really kind of, after about 25 minutes, the wheels kind of fell off, but and Yordles and coach Diff were locked into an intense match up and in, up until that point. And uh, hats off to, to everybody in this game. Um, MVP honors obviously uh, go to the Karthus, right? When you get 17 kills and 14 assists in a game where your team only had like 34 kills, I mean, you you basically had like 90% kill participation. So uh, really well done there. And uh, also the most farm on, on your team, only out farmed by Caitlyn by two CS in the entire game. So really, really well done by the Karthus. Got to tip my hat to you. Yeah, and I'm, I'm really surprised that Immortals didn't ban the set. I really yeah. am now. Uh, now I will say this: you know, we're looking at it. Um, they've shown a lot of diversity here for Coach Diff, a smooth criminal. This is his third champion in three weeks. You know, uh, it was um, what do we have? The Ari, then the Nocturne, and now the yep. Set. So Jeremy's, you know, kind of flexing his champ pool there, and so you have this really dynamic duo. I know we're giving MVP to to uh, the jungle there. That's uh, Mathieu Ledoux. <laughs> I hope I mm. pronounced that for you correctly. Oh, but, oh, the guy with the name change. Uh, yeah, it's a senior, yeah, fuzzy senior pants fuzzy now. pants. I saw in there. But That's right. looking at this duo between Hernandez teaches and a smooth criminal for them to be able to share some of those same champions makes things super tough. So I, I, I really feel for Immortals uh, in this one. They they really did play their hearts out. And I, I think things were, again, I, I hate that their record is what it is because I don't feel like it's completely accurate. But I really yeah. like how they can diversify their champ picks here. You know, there aren't a ton of AP junglers uh, out there, but when you're running an, a an AD top lane and an AD mid lane, you're forcing your jungler to go an AP jungler. And I thought it was really cool that they're showing that uh, flexibility and that willingness to expand their champion pools and bring in these picks to help them have a more rounded team comp. So that is something that, again, more critical analysis. We look at things, um, making sure that you have damage threats for both physical and magic damage. You know, having a full physical team comp really forces your team to have to end the game early. You've got to snowball. You've got to get every neutral objective. You've got to push them into, um, you know, ending early whereas uh because if, if he goes late game they're they're stacking armor they're stacking health you're not going to be really doing that much damage because all they have to do is build armor or build mr whichever you know so having that diverse uh damage threat really really good well played uh from coach diff and i do coming in in the chat he had to move to an alternate uh account because there was a bug there so so matt is going to stick on the uh, the traditional account. So we just had kind of a, an off an off week there on senior fuzzy pants. Uh, so moving into uh, this one, one more thing. Yeah, go ahead real quick. Just not to cut you off, but one more thing I wanted to mention, and this is just a quick, a quick note, right? We're trying to give the, the hard hitting analysis here today. Right. Um, I love seeing coach Mustang, right. The support mm -hmm. for immortals on an engaged support. Right. But I don't know if the engaged support, uh, pick worked as well as the Enchanter support, right? Like the Lulu. So I really want to see if I had any kind of like, you know, uh, uh, tips or whatever, right? I would say uh, prioritize that Enchanter support more for Coach Mustangs because I feel like she did much better with the Lulu than, you know, having to be forced into this kind of tanky, engaged type support. Maybe that's a team comp thing. I don't know. But uh, just, just a quick note, I wanted to throw that out there. Uh, and the Lulu did get banned. So, you know, but yeah. 
and, and this is and what was tough too is because I was going to mention Karma. I think would be a great pick here. Ah, uh, um, yeah. But uh, you know, the Karthus was revealed after Leona was picked, so yep. that it was they were in a really tough situation. Coach Diff like really really flexed on them and and champ select because a Karma would have been fantastic because you you uh you mantra shield your entire team well that helps with that with the requiem you know you absorb a lot of that requiem damage uh similar to how people uh run karma into rumble you know you get the you get the big shield so you just kind of eat a lot of the equalizer that as you're trying to get away from it um but yeah I, i'm with you i think the i think garen i think garen is a is a, can be a, a good split push champion but um he doesn't bring a lot to a team fight or bring a lot to a composition rather i feel like garen can really only play as kind of a disruptor but then he turns into like trendamir where okay well, you just kite him right you, you just you slow him and you kite him and you you just kind of run away from him he doesn't have those sort of hard engages so um i, I would like to see a different pick uh coming through in the top lane too for immortals but either way like i said and you would you would agree too. They played their hearts out. It oh, the yeah. the game uh, was you know kind of closed back and forth you know early before uh, Coach Tiff had uh, get they got the cart the snowballing and then once those requiems come down you know it's it's GG lights out. Um, hotline ping death cat for cutie. Uh, no typos here or no <laughs> misspeaks uh, just yet. <laughs> um, some of you that saw this in the Discord, you saw this. Um, the screenshot, you know, this I think showed um, Hecarim, and this one, the Anivia showed Teemo. Um, uh, hopefully, you can see my little ninja edits in there. I actually copy pasted Victor's splash art and Anivia's splash art, and then did a very rudimentary uh, type text box over them. So, as you see, uh, it does say Victor and it does say Anivia. So, we have well those done. Correct. Thank you. Wow. I'm going to uh, give you a golf clap for that. That's nice. <laughs> Very but, nice, Justin. Again, we go back return on investment. This, we're not getting paid for this, so uh, if, if you were yes. paying me, then you know maybe I could put a little bit higher production value on it. Maybe we even <laughs> actually show gameplay footage. <laughs> oh yeah, right. we're, we're getting there right one day. <laughs> so I actually watched this one yesterday. I was a little late uh, to it, but um, Hotline Ping uh, coming in uh, strong in the the season. They opened up um, uh, against. Uh, Coach Diff, I believe, was our premier match to open up on stream. And and that one was really close back and forth uh, as well. So now they're coming in wanting to kind of avenge uh, that loss and then take on Death Cat for Cutie, who's coming in 1-0 and undefeated uh, so far uh, into this match. And again, looking at the comps, we saw the Nasus come through. We can touch on the Nasus a little bit later. Carter has been playing, I think, a lot of Cho'Gath. And then uh, to see the Nasus come through, it's like, okay, We've got the Nasus, uh, very interesting. We haven't seen uh, Nasus yet, um, as well as the Kaiser coming in. Kaiser wasn't paired with Nalus, but then the, the Pike came through as well. So a couple of spicy picks coming through for Hotline Ping. And then on the other side for Death Cat for Cutie, we ended up seeing the Anivia come through for Sones, Warwick coming through from Apocalypse. I think Apocalypse has put a lot of time uh, onto Warwick. We have... Um, also coach dubs on the Mordekaiser. And then we have the Kogma Lulu, which was the very first pick. So we do see that power pick coming in for red side. Their very first two picks that they get to snag. So prio pick on blue side, Udir. But then when red side comes in, they're like, okay, great. You left Lulu open. We're going to lock Kogma Lulu, which is super uh, oppressive. They they just stick to each other, and everywhere Kogma is, you see Lulu, and then Kogma turns it machine gun Kogma. Uh, you can even have like Juggerma, you know, just completely buff him up, and he's he's unkillable. We even saw C9 run a comp somewhere that with the Kogma Lulu and and turn around a fight, uh, turn around a game really that they shouldn't have won. Uh, so this one, I really like the champ select. We saw some new things, and uh, yeah, it, it it played out very enjoyable game. Ronnie, what'd you take from it? Yeah. Really great take. I I like the call out with the uh, the picks, right? Udir being first pick for Hotline Ping, so much emphasis on that. I don't think we've seen Udir up until this point. So for it to be a first pick, that was really surprising. Caught me off guard. Like, man, they must have a plan for this. And uh, then the Kogma Lulu comes in for Death Cap. Really strong. Like you mentioned, uh, you know, C9 even used it to turn that, that, that CLG game, I think it was, and Oh, what a heartbreaker. That one hurt. But yeah, I mean, 
Kogma Lulu, the power of the Enchanter support and the incredible, you know, AD threat. Really, really great back-to-back -back picks. And then Hotline Pink says, all right, well, we're going to pick our support and our ADC too, right? Boom, just like that. So I love seeing, uh, you know, these guys kind of go back and forth, even just in the pick ban phase. Uh, a lot of ADC bans in this one to start, right? Because you had the, the Tristana, Caitlyn, both used in the first three bands for Hotline Ping. So uh, I guess, you know, maybe Deathcat feeling the pressure uh, being forced to pick that Cog, my first pick for them. Uh, great strategy, though, from Hotline Pig to also deny the Morgana, a really high priority pick for most teams. So great, great pick ban phase. Uh, Daddy Kai's kind of shown he can play just about any ADC. So, you know, uh, Deathcap didn't even bother uh, banning in, any of them. There's just, uh, you know, if you ban five, there's a sixth one you can pick up, doesn't matter. And uh, yeah, really great strategy there, too. I like that they denied a lot of these kind of like big threats in the top lane. Took away the Malphite, the Cho'Gat, the Maokai, and kind of forced uh, Hotline Ping to play the Nasus in top lane. So, uh, you know, when you whittle down the champion pool that much, you start getting down to champions. Maybe they've only played two times, three times. Uh, who knows, right? So great strategy from both teams in the pick ban phase. Um, I, I love, by the way, again, love the edits. Uh, fantastic <laughs> job with the, the Victor and the Anivia. <laughs> Because whenever I, I cast this game with uh, with with Rise with Aegis, we went through like, talking about the pick ban phase for like three minutes, and then I was like, "Oh hey, I've got a note here. Uh, it says that uh, two of these picks are wrong. <laughs> Let's start this over." So awesome job, uh, you know, making that that edit real real clean, kind of keeping us in check here, because you know I'm gonna make mistakes if I don't see it. So, uh, but again, I love seeing the Lulu. Lulu, though, is not the only Enchanter support, right? Remember, guys, uh, this little uh, often, you know, taunted champion. Here goes my, here goes my camera again. Uh, this champion that, you know, uh, a lot of people don't like, but is really great at being an Enchanter support. Yumi, I think, would have been a great pick here, too. Um, but I love oh, seeing the Lulu on. anyway. I, <laughs> I love Yumi. I'm sorry. Um it is what it is. I'm, I'm going to die on this hill. But uh, anyway, uh, you know, pick man phase over with. Uh, let's get into, I guess, who won the match, right? Hotline Ping with a decisive victory in the end. Uh, and not to be insulting to anyone, but when I say decisive victory, when you look at the scoreline, I mean, Danny Kai took over this game. Victor only died one time. The Nasus was completely deathless, the only character in the, in the match without a single death. Uh, really, really strong showing from Hotline Ping. Also finishing the game, the fastest game of the week, 24 minutes, 7 seconds. Just really, really dominant performance uh, from, from start to finish. Uh, but I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you get into it. I'll break down some more. Yeah, I, I, this one just kind of ended. It was there, and it's yeah. like, oh, yeah, they still got some, some time here. And then it just kind of, it, it, it was over. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I... I think maybe if we had something else other than the Lulu with the Kogma, maybe uh, maybe a Galio mid, uh, possibly mm -hmm. a Shin top lane, you could really flex that Juggermaw and, and and get him to that late game. But you know, this Kogma is a late game threat, and so if you're able to end the game before 24 minutes or, or before 25 minutes, that's great. You know, so they had double scaling on the side of Deathcat for Cutie. Um, they had the Anivia, they had the Kogma, both become ridiculously late game powerhouses. And but then you look over on the side of Hotline Ping, um, Victor does scale up. I, I think Victor has more of the advantage early in the scaling, uh, whereas Anivia, you know, can do a lot more later. In, in my opinion, uh, the wall can be extremely disruptive. They do have scaling in the Nasus, but I think Cartera really showed um, uncomfortability on the Nasus. But you know, they got the James Bond Goldeneye KDA coming through the 007. <laughs> I mean, I it's yeah, that. come on, <laughs> it's it's great. I mean, you know, props to these these coaches that are playing unfamiliar roles and unfamiliar champions and saying okay i'm willing to be carried and that is a fantastic skill for for any player to pick up is being able to be carried be willing to be carried 
And that's what we saw over on the side of Hotline Ping. No deaths on the Nasus. Nasus had 77 CS. I don't have the stacks pulled up because I, you know when you're in solo queue and there's a Nasus on the other team, you're constantly clicking on and seeing like, oh, he's got 200 stacks at 15 minutes. Great job, top lane. Mm -hmm. GG, go next, right? You just want to get out of that game, but... You know, I don't have the stacks here, but Nasus being able to be carried. So they had some of that late game insurance on the Nasus, but they didn't have to go that far. They ended the game too soon. Uh, and so so on the other side of, of Death Cap for Cutie, I really feel for them because they, they did have the late game skill and they just couldn't get there. Um, but to that point, the Udir was all over the place. Victor was holding his own in the mid lane. And then, you know, these Kaiza, Kaiza received some nerfs. The, the Q early damage the cooldown rather is uh is increased so she doesn't have her q up as often but once she hits q to max rank the cooldown is still six seconds again so she can still do just as much work and you know she had the, that isolated those isolated targets she can go she can easily go on the anivia and easily go on uh the lulu or the Kog'Maw. But at the same time, when she dives in, one of the problems that you have with a with a diver like Kaiza is the Lulu is there to counteract that. The Lulu can polymorph. The Lulu can uh, do the um, uh, the her ultimate, the wild growth. I think it is. I don't know. Uh, chat will correct yeah. you. Got it. man. So you have yeah, those but elements, but then you bring the Pike in too, and it's like okay, I've got Kaiza diving me. I've got Pike in there as well. So if the Kaiza gets uh, exhausted or polymorphed. You got Pike there with the execution too. So just a really, really cool team comp. And, you know, Kaiza can, you know, duel and 1v1 the Mordekaiser. So we've seen in previous matches where Mordekaiser would be drafted. Mordekaiser just ults the ADC and say, haha, you're in the death realm with me. You can't help your team. Well, then you just isolated yourself against a Kaiza. She pops her Q. You eat every single bit of the Akathian rain. It's, you know, it's deleting you. So really cool comp there. I like the back and forth, kind of this tug of war. And uh, unfortunately for Death Cat for Cutie, Hotline Ping came out on top. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. The Kaisa just blew up, man. I think there was actually a point where Mordekaiser did ult Kaisa and Kaisa just stood there and came out of the ult the only one still alive so yeah. uh real, really impressive stuff that's not usually how that goes when mordekaiser ults you to the death realm it's because he's gonna leave the death realm and you're staying behind and you're gonna see a gray screen for a while and uh that's not how it went kaisa really uh took over and uh i think the only death if i remember correct uh kaisa was kind of scrambling through the enemy blue buff area it was even like uh, he almost got away, like uh, the blast cone, the ultimate over the wall. It took like three or four members to actually chase him down and, and actually take him out. So really strong, uh, strong game there. Uh, also, the MVP honors have to go to the Kaisa. Uh, but the Pike had a, Ched playing the Pike. Man, amazing Pike game. Actually, the second Pike game for Ched this weekend. Um, had a quadra kill. It was insane. Like... Uh, at, kind of turned to fight uh because at some point death cap said okay you know what guys we got to figure out a way to get the kaisa out of the fight and they they kind of accomplished it a bit right they kind of zoned her away but then ched kind of took over anyway it was just execute after execute after execute uh it was really impressive and uh you know they they ended up almost even getting him the the pentakill which would have been the first pentakill of coach rivals uh didn't happen really really close uh i'm sure he's not mad that it was a quadra but uh, either way, really strong game from Hotline Ping. And, and like you said, the Nasus, only 77 CS, right, uh, uh, compared to the Mordekaiser with 114. It's a short game, so obviously the CS numbers are going to be a little low. But Mordekaiser, for the, for the most part, was doing a good job of keeping the Nasus in check. So as the game would have gone on, maybe it was a different story. I don't know. But it looked like, uh, like really Deathcap had a... Uh, game plan they tried to execute it and uh unfortunately just got their wings clipped a few minutes in and they weren't able to get back into the game uh hotline ping kind of had an answer for everything death cap was trying to do uh, i mean good dragon control from death cap in the early part of the game uh we had a a uh, a really awesome moment uh where warwick came up and got a steal on the rift herald but then hotline ping showing their strength as a team denied the pickup of the rift herald eye and it went you know for nothing so th this this huge team fight they're trying to fight over this rift herald 
they lose they get the herald but no one gets the eye they lose two members that kind of encapsulates a lot of how the game went for death cap uh really strong moments but ultimately not enough of those moments uh in quick succession to put a whole game together for sure so congratulations hotline ping taking that one uh definitely um Kind of yeah, the the champion the champion differences I think were a little uh, too much for him. So we're gonna move over to Immortals versus Hotline Ping. So Immortals and Hotline Ping both playing two matches last week. I'm sure they were exhausted uh, by the time the night was over. Uh, but we do have this match up here. Immortals still hunting uh, for their first win. So at this point they're uh, they're zero and two going into Hotline Ping, who is one and one. So Immortals. Uh, thirsty, hungry for uh, for a win here. Uh, I do like the Vi pick. I think Vi is um, is extremely underrated. Obviously, if you've been watching LCS uh, or if you follow Broxa on Twitter or YouTube, you know he's a major proponent of Vi. Even played it twice this past week. Uh, Vi is one of those champions similar to a Nautilus. Or I'm sorry, a Nocturne where your ult is your go button. It's basically like, okay, uh, I'm playing the champion. My ult is up. Let's group and force a fight. Uh, I'm going to go on to uh, you know, the, the enemy champion. And I th I'm wondering if the vibe was in response to the vein, because as we look at how champ select played out, you have the Lulu sneaking through. Lulu's been getting a lot of bans, but Lulu comes through for Immortals. That's the very first. That was their priority pick to get that. Uh, and then you follow that up with, Olaf Pike, so the Pike coming through, and instead of the Kaiza being paired with the Pike, we had the Vein this time from Hotline Ping. You asked for the Olaf, you got the Olaf. I hate seeing Olaf uh, as an AD carry. And then we have the answer from, uh, okay, so we had Lulu, then we had Olaf Pike, and then the answer was Ash Ramus. So showing the jungle early this time for Immortals instead of saving Ramus for the end, they're saving their mid pick, and then answered uh, with the Vein. They go through second ban phase. You know, the set gets banned. Malphite Oriana Zareth gets banned uh, because we saw Aiden on the Zareth uh, in the match versus Tragedy, and he uh, was running away with that game. So don't give Aiden uh, Zareth, uh, please. Uh, and then uh, I think the Vi is in a is a great response to the Vein. Vi point and click ult. You lock on to the Vein. Uh, you you know you dunk her down, and then you know your team. Uh, can just pile on her. Uh, the Lulu takeaway is also great into the vein. You can polymorph the vein. She does no damage when she's a little squirrel. Uh, you can wild growth your your Vi that's going in if the Vi is taking too much damage. And then you have the Nico that wants to that can dive in as well. So a really cool dive comp from Immortals, and then the Lulu on the backside trying to buff up the Ash into a machine gun. And then on Hotline Ping side. This is what I kind of wanted to see too out of um, Death Cat for Cutie when they're running the Lulu Cogmaw, maybe a Galio mid lane, something like that, to have that extra layer of protection to to beef up that Cogmaw so he can be that late game uh, team shredder. But uh, but either way, this is what this is how Champ Select played out. So Ronnie, uh, tell us how it played out. Yeah, uh, love seeing the Olaf. Right, I called it out last week immediately rewarded thank you hotline ping uh you won the naming wars against death cat for cutie in your match and uh you won my heart by, by <laughs> thinking Olaf. Um, no but all, in all seriousness really great pick i love seeing the olaf come through my other fav one of my other favorite uh like non-jungle champions is the galio uh which also came up in this match uh, I think actually three, no, four of these champions were like unique. I don't think mm -hmm. we'd seen Olaf before, Galio, Cho'Gath, Vayne. They were all unique uh, from the side of Hotline Ping. And then on the other side, Immortals, yeah, the Vi pick, the Nico pick, also unique picks that we hadn't seen to this point. So again, you know, Coach Rivals just surprising us once again, you know, with some new picks, some some new flavor three weeks into the, into the season. Um, but again, you know, we talked about, Ched playing on that pike. I think this might be the last pike game you ever see Ched play. I agree. Uh, because he is just incredible with these ultimates and and making sure that he's where he needs to be, that he's able to kind of get these executes one after another. Uh, you know, really, really big game for him. We'll, you know, we'll dive into some of that in a minute. Um, I love seeing, yeah, the Vi in the top lane was a surprise. Uh, we did see Vi in the LCS this week. 
Uh, Roxa played it to perfection, right? Really, really strong games from him. Uh, who knew? Who knew it was going to happen, but it did. And uh, yeah, we see it here in Coach Rivals as well. Uh, almost like, you know, these uh, these two leagues are mirroring each other a little. we got like a spy in our midst. <laughs> no, I don't know about all that. But uh, And then the Nico mid. I really like Nico as a champion because of the way that she's able to kind of do the whole, you know, kind of trickster type thing, right? So, oh, now I'm Remus. Oh, now I'm Ash. And it, it, it puts your opponents on their back foot a little bit. So, and Yordles knows like, okay, guys, we need a little bit of breathing room. We've lost a couple of games here. Uh, how can we, how can we kind of reel it back in? And Nico kind of gives you a little bit of that breathing room. She's going to be able to kind of fake out the opponents here and there, uh, you know, so they're not able to test the waters with as much confidence as they normally would. And so I like the pick. Uh, I think it worked worked pretty well overall, you know, but uh, uh, ultimately, you know, uh, Hotline Ping was the stronger team, you know, not to, not to spoil it, but uh, why don't you break it down for us, Justin? Yeah. <laughs> It was very, it was very even uh, for yeah. a while, and uh, the Ash was ahead of the Vein, and the Vein ended up grabbing a double, and then Vein grabbed another double, and then once the Vein started snowballing and getting her items a lot earlier than she should have, um, things kind of fell apart uh, for Immortals. Immortals were still, obviously, they were still fighting back. There's no quit in this team uh, whatsoever. Um, I like the Lulu again. I like the Lulu. I like the Vi in there. One thing I saw out of the bot lane, and it's something that I'm guilty of as well as an AD carry, is greeting for tower plates early. Um, they had a great fight in the bot lane against the uh, against the Vayne, and the, I think the Pike survived, but they ended up killing the Vayne. There was a gank from the Ramus. Uh, got a kill on the Vayne. The uh, Ash Lulu were pressuring the tower early, already got one plate, and they greeted for that second plate. They stayed so long for the second plate that it gave time for uh, Vayne to come all the way back to lane. Uh, and at that point, post that team fight or post that gank, Ash was only sitting at about 50% health. So I know, I know after the play, or I, or I have... I have a very strong feeling in my mind that English teacher was saying it just one more plate. I just want one more plate. That's <laughs> extra gold. We can take that. We're going to snowball our lead. Vane got back in time. Uh, so many Pike E flashes that were so good. Uh, yep. the, I think it's the undertow. Uh, he E's in and he can flash and it'll pull his shadow. And as long as the shadow crosses through the champion, it's a stun. But yeah, he would E flash and uh, the shadow would come through and connect to help close that distance a little bit more. And those big stuns coming through, Vayne was already able to back and buy. So that's something I would say for um, the Immortals bot lane is take your victories. Uh, take you know one plate. If you have a double wave stacked up, minion wave, keep pushing into the tower, maybe get you a plate. If you don't have enough minions to be able to get a plate before the enemy respawns, get that recall in because even though they had just won that fight, even though they had just shut down the vein, uh, Ash just had an, an influx of income. They've gotten all that money. Ash hadn't spent that money yet. And I think that is something that does lead some teams, particularly newer players. I'm not talking about our players in particular, but just newer players in general. It's like, yeah, I'm, I just got a double kill. I'm two and oh, I can beat you. I'm stronger than you. Like, yeah, but you're just sitting with a wallet full of money. You actually haven't bought anything yet. You've got to spend your money to be stronger. Just getting the kill doesn't make you stronger. And that's what we saw happen. I think that was one of the major turning points in this game because they had the bot lane beat. Uh, I will say that the Ash had a lead and Ash was poking down really well with the volley. Uh, Lulu was there to support, you know, add picks onto the Ash. So you get extra picks, to, picks damage on there. So a great start for them, but they gave away those kills uh, early when they shouldn't have, or when they didn't need to. And from that, we had the vein uh, snowball and that's, uh, that's da daddy Kai, correct? Oh yeah. On the vein. Yeah. So daddy Kai just kind of, uh, ran with it from there, but I don't know who you're going to pick for MVP, but I'm giving it to the Galio. I, I know I don't want to steal anything, but I, I got to give it to the Galio. There was wow. such, yeah. So the clutch taunts, uh, yep. from the Galio, uh, were huge. Uh, that is, uh, Zenburn over on hotline ping. Just fantastic. The, there was a big fight that, um, ended up getting vein, uh, a quadra kill, 
where the Galio ult came through, and when the Galio ults, he still puts the shield on the teammates that are that are that are there that he's ulting onto, right? So the yep. shield still went through. Galio got polymorphed instead of the vein. Uh, Vi went in on the vein. Galio got polymorphed to cancel the ult. Okay, um, you know I. It's in hindsight, it's hard to say whether that was the right call or not because if you don't polymorph the Galio, he's going to knock everybody up. So you're polymorphing to prevent the knock up, but then you don't have the polymorph in time for the vein, and then the vein can just kind of run wild. After he after he came out of polymorph, he ended up getting a three or four man taunt. So this Galio was was clutch. Uh, the Galio pick was one of the reasons why Vein was able to do what Vein did. So I, I would give it to the Galio, and I'm gonna let you talk for a little bit because I'm gonna talk some items after after you're done. Yeah, some some hard hitting analysis from Justin. <laughs> no, uh, I really like the call. Wow, really gutsy pick to give the MVP to Galio because right, he's only got one kill. Right, it's not as flashy, uh, but I really like your call. Uh, it's difficult to not give it to the vein, right? With with two quadra kills in this game, really, really. But to your point, right? The only way Vane's getting those quadras is because the team's setting her up. Mm-hmm. Uh, so breaking it down a little bit, right? To to dial it back a little, yeah. Like Vane, Vane was having a pretty tough time in the early portions of the match. Daddy Kai looked fine, right? But lost. Uh, Two of the three deaths, I believe, were in the first 10 minutes. So, uh, you know, really having a, a difficult time in the early stages of the game. Uh, again, Chad, really great, strong showing on Pike, but five deaths, right? He had a couple uh, in the early stages as well. Got away once or twice, but uh, also got taken down. Um, so, yeah, the bot lane for Immortals, really strong showing in this one. Uh, Ramus came through again. And it wasn't as good in this game, right? Most deaths in the game for Ramus, it's not a very good sign because Ramus is uh, normally he's going to be the last guy standing. Uh, you know, he's got all the all the defensive stats and he's going to run in, run out with the chem tank. Uh, but uh, it didn't work out for him this time. Uh, Hotline Ping was able to kind of zero in on that strategy and, and maybe they figured out that Ramus was the go button for the team. I don't know. Um, but you could tell at some point and Yordles figured out, okay, look, Vane is the last person we're attacking. We're getting one or two kills, and then Vane's staying alive and wiping all of us at the end. We got to kill the Vane. So after after they figured that out, right, they got like, it was like around 20 minutes, 25 minutes. I forget the exact timer. Um, up until that point, they were pretty close in KDA. It was like 12 to 13, uh, right after the 12 or 13 minute mark. Fast forward a few minutes, they get into this big team fight near the Baron pit. They take out the Vane. And Immortals is like, all right, guys, we got this. And then somehow Hotline Ping finds all these picks. The pike comes up huge, gets three picks of his own. Um, and then they end up, I believe they get the ace at that point, pick up the Baron, and then the game kind of just completely snowballs in their favor from there. So really big uh, moments for both teams. Uh, unfortunately, just, yeah, when you let the Vayne free fire in the back line there, uh, she's going to get big. And when she gets her mythic at 15, you know, sub 15 minutes, yeah, she's going to be a menace. So uh, really strong, strong game by both bot lanes. But Hotline Peak came out on top in this one. And uh, my MVP, I got to give it to the Vayne for getting two quadras. I just gave it to Daddy Kai in the other game. So it's back to back for him. Strong game for the whole team. Uh, I like the Galio MVP from you, but I got to give it to the Vayne. All right. I respect that. We can, <laughs> yeah. we can all <laughs> we can have different opinions. Exactly. They, I, I I didn't see plated steel caps this game, so yep. I'm gonna I'm a I'm gonna give it to Boris again. Boris uh, Boris uh, bamboozled him at the shop. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no plated steel caps on the Vi, who is the main engage onto this vein. Like, and I I think people are undervaluing the boots. I think you get so much value. It's not the armor in the boots that you're that you're valuing. It's the passive in the boots that you're valuing. That 12% reduction uh, per auto attack. And Vayne, that's what Vayne does. Vayne auto attacks. You've got to got you've got to get those plated steel caps. We did have the thorn mail coming through from Ramus. We had the Zanyas for the Nico. I like it. Um, and then down on the Lulu. I'm. I don't know about Swifty boots. I'm not sold on Swifty boots on Lulu. Uh, I think uh, maybe here we could do. You could even go plated steel caps on the Lulu, but uh, I think Lucidity. 
uh, maybe would have been better. You've got the the extra ability haste to be able to uh, shield more and polymorph more. Um, all of those things like that. Sorry, my dog is moving in the background. If you hear the nails on the <laughs> on the floor, but um, yeah, you've. I, I think I, the itemization was a little wonky for me. Um, not particularly a fan of it so but i don't know if that would have turned anything i think there were still some tough decisions they make uh, because i think the galio the, the galio i feel like came in clutch and and really did a lot of work here for, for hotline ping so um let's move on to our final match from last week was team tragedy versus death cap for cutie uh team tragedy um had some reschedules uh, we were coming in at 1-0 after that really long match versus Immortals. And then Death Cap for Cutie already coming off that really tough loss from earlier in the day. Uh, the fastest game, I believe, of the season so far, uh, coming in at 24 minutes and 7 seconds. Um, so uh, walk through champ select real quick. Um, the Nocturne was let through, and I don't know if Nocturne is going to be much of a priority moving into this patch. We're going to talk about it a little bit later. Um, but first pick for Tragedy was Nocturne. Deathcap for Cutie answers up with Caitlyn Thresh, which is a punishing bot lane. You know, you really want to punish uh, the enemy support or the enemy AD carry when you're running Caitlyn Thresh. Thresh hooks you. Caitlyn lays some traps. Thresh can flay you. Then you have to walk through the traps if the trap didn't get you uh, when you came out of hook. So very, very punishing bot lane. Tragedy answers with the Morgana, so the black shield to counteract some of the hooks. And then the Scion pick that uh, Coach McGross has been an absolute monster on. We go into Gnar pick for Death Cap. Then we run into obviously more standard bands. We have a couple of, we have three ADC bands from Death Cap for Cutie. Uh, I'm going to throw some shade over at Sones. I was talking to Sones and he's like, man, Sivir's not worth the ban. Stop playing Sivir. Sivir's not worth the ban. And then we get into <laughs> this match. And what is their first ban? Sivir. Thank you very much. Uh, and then the Jinx and Zaya followed it up with the band phase. So it kind of pinched our, our ADC champ pool. So we ended up going Vera Seraphine. And uh, Deathcap uh, answered with the Ari after picking the Volibear Bear before the Vera Seraphine. So Ari coming through with the um, those picks. So definitely some, some good pick on the side of Deathcap for Cutie. Ari wanting to get picks. Thresh wanting to get picks. Uh, Nar and Volibear Bear can both dive. So um, they have multiple ways to win this game. So I like the I like the draft from Death Cap for Cutie uh, because if they're not getting picks, then you just have the Nar and Volley Bear as dive buddies, uh, you know, hitting that back line. Over on the side of Team Tragedy, we went with an Enchanter in the mid lane uh, to kind of buff up that Nocturne. Obviously, Nocturne wants to go in, Scion wants to go in, Seraphine can ult through them, and then we just layer the CC on top of each other. So more of a more of like a team fighty uh, kind of comp coming through from them. But um, I'm not gonna, I, I can't be too critical in this match because I was playing in it. But uh, Ronnie, can you give us uh, your thoughts on this one. Yeah, right. It's hard to be impartial when you were you were in the match, but now you did a great job. Uh, I, I gotta say, so love the picks from both teams. Uh, I called out that I wanted to see more Volley Bear Jungle. We saw two of them, two, two games this week with Volley Bear Jungle in it. Love that. This is one of those games. Uh, I love seeing the Caitlyn Thresh, like you mentioned, really strong bot lane duo, but you can't pick the Thresh if you leave up Morgana, man. That's such a tough pick to go into and sure enough Morgana is a comfort pick uh, for Team Tragedy so that was one of those things where it was like maybe Death Cap didn't think about it they were more prioritized at banning you know the Mundo or the Olaf I don't know what exactly the uh, the team comms were in that moment but it, if you're going to pick up the Thresh you got to ban that Morgana just because of how much the counter uh, with the black shield is is able to just take away all of your gauge tools so i think right there you guys had a big advantage just from the first couple of picks the scion pick was a unique one we hadn't seen scion before and uh, i love seeing that come through because scion is such an oppressive champion and fits what you guys needed you guys needed some beef and scion is beef to you know the largest degree so i love Premium seeing that grade Premium Pre yeah, grade exactly. Beef. Premium grade beef. <laughs> I love that. And what what was crazy is, yeah, you brought up the three ADC bands from Death Cap. Well, Tragedy also had two ADC bands, and we had a Caitlyn pick, first pick, well, for the for Team Red. So really, we had six ADCs taken off the board before you guys could 
could even sink your teeth in. So the fact that the Varus was still available, it's pretty big. So I know you play some Varus, you know, really, really lucky for you that they didn't ban out. You know, I guess, I don't know what else you could have picked after the Varus. There's a uh, uh, Samira, right? There's a couple others you can kind of dig maybe a little deeper with, but you really start getting to the to the bottom of the barrel pretty quickly. I guess maybe like a Kaisa, right? So there's still a few options there. But uh, yeah, I mean, you, you were, I, I, not that I have any insider knowledge, but I'm sure you were scrambling a little bit when you saw all those bands come through. Uh, and, and really hats off to you for still finding a way to get a champion that made a big impact. Uh, and not only did you pick up the Varus, but you did the on-hit Varus, which is my favorite Varus. I love it, man. I love to see it. Pros never play it because uh, they're too they're too afraid. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Uh, but yeah, anyway, let's let's get to the uh, the post match. How did it go? Uh, break it down for us, Justin. Yeah, so uh, we had a game plan. So I'm getting a little bit. Of, I have some insider knowledge on this one, so I, I try not to belabor the podcast with too much of that. Um, but we our game plan was to play an enchanter mid we knew that coming into this that Sones is a really strong mid laner and we knew that overall as a whole uh death cap for cuties bot side is a lot stronger than ours like collectively um those two players together um i'm a pull i'm a shout out to them uh that's gonna be uh here we yeah uh peter yeah shiny nine tails and rogue otter zach I knew that they were coming in stronger than we were, um, just collectively. Those two together, you got two gold players into a gold and a and a bronze player, right? So that's kind of like, okay, they have the advantage there. So Danielle and I, or Piper Maru and I, we were content on playing weak side. We knew that we needed to play some sort of champion that if we got behind, we could still be useful. I am always going to say it over and over and over, and Team Coach Diff is doing the exact same thing. Varus is a phenomenal weak side ADC. I love him. He's right back there on the wall. It's mm -hmm. he's a great pick if you know that you could you may not potentially win lane, but you still want to be uber useful uh, later on. Other great picks for that would be Ash. Ash is a great uh, I feel weak side. Uh, champion because her ult can can turn the tide in fights right um ezreal can do the same thing as he just kind of scales up but i really like the varus um for this so um when they they did have us pinched so there were a little uh a couple things we ran through right i was considering Jin, um but the problem with Jin is Jin is more burst damage not really sustained consistent damage so if you're going to pick something like a gin or the lethality varus or the lethality sivir you have to have some sort of sustained damage threat to go with it so whether that be something in the mid lane like a rise a tf a, a cassiopeia something along those lines if you don't have any sort of sustained damage threat then you've got to be that answer. We did have the Nocturne. So the Nocturne is sustained damage. Really fast attack speed is going to pump out a lot of damage um, quickly in succession. Um, but I went with the Varus because of the Volibear and the Gnar. Honestly, I was afraid of the dive. I didn't want Volibear diving on me. I didn't want Gnar diving on me. I wanted to be able to um, throw out the Chains of Corruption uh, and, and root them and slow them down and then just kind of bide my time in the back and let Seraphine boost up this Nocturne and then throw her ult through everybody. And then we had ended up having some chain CC go through with that with the, um, I don't know what's, do you know Seraphine's ult? Oh man. I don't remember the name of it actually. Is it, is it Encore? Chat may have to help out. Yeah. Um, I don't remember the name of the ult. Okay. Bummer. So, so, uh, so uh, Nocturne can ult in, Scion can go in Seraphine, uh, I can, Seraphine can ult and then I can ult on top of that and they're just stuck there. Like they can't go anywhere. There's so much crowd control. And when this match started, uh, they blew Piper Maru's flash in a bot lane tri brush invade. So she saw it, she flashed away, Ari flashed after, was not able to, I think she was able to get the charm, just wasn't able to get the kill. Um, so from there, I just told her, all right, we're going to play uber safe. We're just going to camp. We're going to tower, uh, encore. Thank you. Castle view. Uh, appreciate that. So, um, so we were playing, we were backing off. We were waiting, we we're letting them push into us. And a couple things that death cap, I don't feel really did 
well, was punish us for tower hugging. You know, we were we were under tower. We were hugging there the whole time. They didn't dive us, and they had Volibear. Like Volibear is a Volibear is built for dive. Like his whole kit, you you press R and the tower goes away. Uh, so you that was they never tried to dive us with the Volibear. They didn't bring Nar down. You know, uh, maybe TP down and then dive us. So um, it was one of those things where we weren't enabling the Thresh. Thresh couldn't hit hooks because we weren't staying far enough up to get hooks. We were just letting them push into us. But at the same time. They didn't, they didn't freeze on us. They didn't freeze the wave um, back towards their tower, forcing us to move forward to try to collect XP and CS. Um, but then even when they pushed the, the lane towards us in the bot lane, they didn't fully crash the wave because I was able to freeze it a couple times. So um, there were a couple things there that helped us stay in the game. Um, but I think it was about that eight minute mark where we were trying to contest uh, bot scuttle. Danielle and I roamed up and we went right past red buff and we... Uh, kind of got the jump on the Volibear. I threw the ult down, was able to get a double kill there. And then you had what I'm going to call MVP moment, the sexiest Scion ult uh, that has ever been seen across Summoner's Rift. Uh, <laughs> Coach McGross uh, TP'd, or Magros, I, uh, sorry, Mike, I'm, I know I'm butchering your last name, but TP'd in and, oh man, the three-man Scion ult right there near that mid lane brush was 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 chef's kiss uh <laughs> it was it was incredible so that that pretty much snowballs and then we just played the comp we just we let uh we let um drake uh on seraphine kind of buff up this nocturne nocturne goes in and then we just layer the cc over it it was a very easy to execute comp and uh we end up pulling out the win in 24 22 yeah second fastest game of the week you guys really nailed it it was uh it was impressive uh there was an unofficial ace at 10 and a half minutes, right? Like uh, respawn timers aren't long enough at that point, but you guys you guys uh, got five kills, right? In, in that moment, pretty intense, kind of two fights at once. Uh, yeah, that three-man knockup by Scion, what a crazy ultimate, that was excellent. And, and yeah, the way that you guys were able to get the Scion plus the Seraphine ultimates to layer, I hadn't really seen that before, so uh, caught me off guard. I don't know how I would have reacted in a game um you know but yeah to your point volibear wants to wants to tower dive you we didn't really see any tower dives um like to see a little bit more of that that's the power of the champion um you know maybe something something else would have would have worked a little better there but um you know as far as the game plan goes it was really obvious that you guys had a very focused game plan um, you know, Volibear did a really good job in the early game. He actually, just to dial it back even a little more, got the first two scuttles, mm -hmm. which every jungler knows is a big deal, right? Like, even even the pros will give up their lives for, for a scuttle crab if it's one of those first two. <laughs> Looking at you, Blabber. <laughs> yeah, Blabber, you're on notice. Um, but yeah, you know, nice job by the Volibear. Pick up both of those early scuttles, right? They also got first dragon for six minutes. Mm -hmm. Uh, picked up the first Rift Herald at nine minutes, so a minute after spawn. Really, uh, like, heavy objective focus on these neutral objectives, and it was working. Deathcap for Cutie had a strong, like, first nine, ten minutes, and then it just, man, you guys really kind of started snowballing. It was after, right about the ten and a half minute mark when that fight happened, where Cyan got the three-man knockup, you guys got the ace, uh, you got another double kill on the top lane from Nocturne, couple of dragons later it was like 17 18 minutes in and it was like wait they're about to win this game it's over so uh it all came together really quickly at the end uh no dragon soul in this one uh but a big triple kill to end the game around the 21 minute mark by nocturne um and then again big team fight ultimates by seraphine and scion the way you guys turned out the lights and then just kind of closed in with all these big ultimates that were disrupting and knocking them up taunting huge huge game uh, two players went death list. The other three only had one death. Really strong showing from Team Tragedy overall. And my first tie for MVP, it has to go to the Scion and the Nocturne. Sorry, Seraphine, you had an incredible game. <laughs> like, man, like what a game, right? I, I, I was so impressed by just the way that you were able to, to uh, utilize your champion perfectly, right? Hitting ultimates over the wall, poking here and there. But the Scion and the, and the Nocturne, just especially the Nocturne came up so big. So many of these big team fight ultimates hit R, turn out the lights, find the guy you need to take out, 
and it came it came through big uh for you guys so uh mvp tie goes to uh to those two players yeah for sure so i'm a Del- coach magros and eric 29 those are the two players there yes. phenomenal job um I, you know, and the thing is, is it worked well because of the comp that we had. Um, so diving into our comp just a little bit more, if, if I wasn't on the Varus and I was on something like Lucian or Kaiza, I think we would have been absolutely screwed because I, mm. I need to get, I need to get ahead early. And, uh, you know, those champions definitely want to duel and fight um, and, and get those leads snowballing. And because of the, because we were on the Varus, that was that was fine. Um, same thing mid lane. Drake Drake Prime was on the Seraphine. He's on Seraphine. He's always going to be useful. He's going to be pumping out shields. He's going to be throwing the roots. The ult is really good, and we knew that he was going to be playing more of a weak side mid. Like he he just needs to play an enchanter. So that was kind of our game plan coming through. And, and you look at the CS. Yeah, the Ari out CS the Seraphine. And and I was talking to to Sones afterwards. He's like, man, you're the Seraphine just kind of hugged Tower and gave up CS. I'm like, yeah, because that was. It was okay to do that. There was Mm -hmm. like, we had to do that because we knew we would still get value out of those picks. But honestly, Deathcap had an answer for that. They had the answer. The answer is in the Volibear and the Gnar. Those were their answers. I think it was just come down to execution. Uh, Tower dives are not easily done. Tower dives are really not easily done. Uh, it's a lot of coordination. You got to juggle that aggro and that could be something that, you know, maybe they were hesitant to call and say, let's dive this. Maybe something that they're going to work on a little bit more, but for any teams out there that are wondering, you have those enemies that are tower hugging. They're not leaving. Uh, you're, you're obviously dominating them in CS, but you're not getting those, those kills to be able to really open up the objective takes. That's when you execute the dive, you slow push, you get, you know, a two or three wave, of minions stacked up you bring all their help too because as soon as the enemy tries to attack you all your minions turn on them too it's just it, they, they cannot survive so i think death cat missed an opportunity there um and, and that really would have turned this game uh in, in a different direction so um we are we're man we're rocking and rolling through here we're gonna try to blow through this that was a lot of matches to cover so here are your standings after three weeks we have team coach diff undefeated sitting in sole possession of first place three and oh uh band set everybody band set versus team coach diff they've shown get them out of there that that they can that you know that two different players can can play set get rid of that champion you don't want hernandez on it and you don't want uh smooth criminal on it get them out uh, hotline ping coming in with a with a phenomenal bounce back week uh coming in two and one total record they are in sole possession of second place notice i bumped them above jge and tragedy because they've played an extra game so hotline ping sitting at two and one uh second place uh a two-way tie for third but just good enough at two and oh and team tragedy at two and oh death cat for cutie uh, in a tie at fifth place with the team on the right, both coming in at one and two, and then Immortals and Spawn of Baron uh, tied for seventh at 0 and three. And again, I'll say it, I've said it before, I'll say it again. These two teams are better than the 03 record shows. I, I think they're just, they're, it, they've had so many matches be so close, and it's just, it falls the other way. Yeah, and uh, you know, don't lose hope, guys. It's, a, it's if I'm not mistaken, it's a seven week season, right? Yep. So there's 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 plenty more games. They they could easily go on a three game run here in these last four weeks, put it together, and all of a sudden it, they're three and four, four and three, and they're fighting for one of those mid middle spots. And it's every team goes to playoffs, uh, or is it just top six? Uh, every team makes it. Yeah, every team Hallelujah. goes to playoffs, and then and then it's you know they kind of whittle them down from there. So this is essentially just deciding playoff seating. This is the time when you want to experiment. You want to kind of figure out what your team identity is. What are our win conditions? What do we do well? What do we need to work on? And then by the time you get to week seven, week eight, and playoffs begin, at that point, you're like, all right, guys, we know this doesn't work. We know we need to ban this. We know these guys can't surprise us. We've seen the card this jungle. We've seen right all the tricks up their sleeves. And you know that's going to be whenever uh, these teams really have to start digging deep because the guys at the bottom are going to start creeping up. And I think you're going to get a couple of surprise wins here as we uh, as we start to go cl- uh, closer towards the end of the season. So uh, really, really impressive job from Team Coach Diff, not to discount the three wins that they have. You had to earn them all. The fact that you're the only undefeated team still standing, uh, well, we'll see tonight because uh, we got our, our final makeup match tonight between JGE and Team Tragedy to 
to see who the other undefeated team joining them at the top of the table is going to be. But really, really top uh, uh, performances from everybody on their on their team. We're going to we're going to see how they could do without the set maybe in week four. And uh, uh, maybe it'll be a different story, but really strong showing from from these guys. Uh, but, but yeah, don't lose hope in Yodel, Swan and Baron. You guys have really strong teams. You've got re- you've got the things that you need to put it together. Uh, it'll happen. You know, don't worry. All right, so let's get nerdy for just a few minutes. All right, we're going to look at some data uh, that's coming through the meta so far through Coach Rival Season 2. We're going to burn through this really quickly uh, because we want to get into our patch notes. A new patch dropped today, so we're going to talk about how that's going to impact Uh, Coach Rivals moving forward specifically tonight and for tomorrow. Uh, But here's the data so far through uh, Coach Rivals. So some really cool stuff uh, I wanted to to share. 62 unique champion picks have been uh, made. 22 of those were in week three alone. So I think that is pretty impressive. Some of the ones you see on your screen, the Pike Ched come through on the Pike. Uh, Cartera uh, bringing out the Nasus. We had the Zyra show up. And then we had Vi in the top lane. So some really cool stuff there. Uh, more picks were obviously unique. We had a Kog'Maw. Um, I, I think you mentioned the Udir. I think the Olaf was brand new this past week, right? Um, so definitely a lot of new champion picks coming through. Uh, our boy Nautilus, those of you that have been on the in the Nautilus fan club, you've been holding out hope uh, for our uh, our sea uh, born boy over there. Uh, he is the <laughs> he's the only one champion that has over 50% pick rate. He is the only champion, the only one that has over a 50% pick rate in the league. Six picks over 11 games. He has a 0% ban rate, but he's only gotten two wins out of those six picks. So sitting at a... a um, unfortunate 33% win rate is the Nautilus. Uh, moving forward, we have Morgana as the only champion with an over 50% ban rate. And we've talked about Morgana, you know, ad nauseum here. Uh, we know why she's a strong pick. You know, Ronnie's uh, done a, a really good breakdown there. He even mentioned it um, uh, tonight or, or in the, the stream today with, you know, the Black Shield just very disrupting all those CC engages. So she's had seven bans over 11 games. So a 64% ban rate. She's been picked twice over those 11 games. She only has one win, though. That was the win coming from Tragedy. So her win rate's actually 50%, but she's only been played twice. Uh, but the total PB rate for her is 82%, meaning she's appeared in nine out of 11 drafts, which I think is massive. That's a, that's a, a huge... Uh, PB presence there from Morgana. And then before we get into patch notes, uh, we're going to talk about the other champs, just kind of honorable mentions here, the other champs that are over 50% pick and ban. We have Lulu with an 18% pick rate, 45% ban rate, but Lulu is now on that 0% win train. So she's getting up towards uh, like Nautilus territory, right? Where Nautilus was struggling so much. Uh, We may have to change that slide over, change the discussion over to Lulu. Uh, Caitlin is sitting at a 33% win rate, over 50% pick and ban, so 27-36. Uh, Ezreal, we're going to talk about him just a little bit in patch notes, uh, 18% pick rate, 36% ban rate. Uh, Nocturne is joining, um, I believe, uh, set with the 100% win rate uh, category there, 20% pick rate, 8, 27% ban rate. But then you look further down the slide here, we have Anivia, 30% pick, 18% ban, only a 25% win rate. And then the Varus, I'm a big Varus apologist, as you know, 45% pick rate, 80% win rate for my boy Varus. Uh, any other, uh, anything that you want to talk about with this this interesting uh, kind of PB data? These are the most popular champions in addition to yeah. uh, Morgan Nautilus. So it's Morg Nautilus and then Lulu, Kate, Ezreal, Nocturne, Anivia, Varus. These are your most popular that show up in picks and bands. Gotcha. Yeah, no, good to see the data at a glance, right? Like, I like I like kind of analyzing some of this stuff. A uh, couple quick call-outs for me. Mishka has played, like, a different support in every game and every time has had a big impact, right? So it was the Zyra this week. It was Lux a couple weeks ago. Just want to give a quick shout-out to Mishka. He stole a dragon with, like, your Q mm-hmm. on Zyra the other day. That was pretty incredible. You're doing some pretty cool stuff. Keep it up with the cool picks. Uh, Ched putting his stamp on the game, playing the pike. No one else I don't think is ever going to pilot pike uh, going forward as well as Ched did. Prove me wrong, right? Who knows? But 
uh, the, the Pike games from Chad were pretty incredible. It might be the last ones we see from him for a while, just based off of how well he did. Uh, and then the Nautilus, um, the Nautilus numbers are interesting because if I'm remembering this correctly, team on the right has played Nautilus support all three games. So they, they have a heavy emphasis on uh, picking up that Nautilus and making that an important part of their game plan. They won their first game this past week, so that's going to add to his, uh, his numbers. But I think that's part of the reason why his numbers are so skewed because that's a huge point of emphasis for them, and they, they've only got one win on the board so far. So I think as, when they start getting a couple more wins under their belt, you'll see Nautilus, uh, uh, his pick rate probably stay unchanged. But uh, I think you're going to see an increase on his ban rate, and if not, you're definitely going to see an increase on his win rate. Uh, and then last thing, the fact that Varys has single-digit percentage on, on his ban rate is incredible to me because he's got an 80% win rate. I don't think you're going to see as much Varys because people are going to put more of an emphasis on either picking it or banning it. Uh, same with the Nocturne, right? He's such a strong pick. We've covered it. Every single time Nocturne shows up and he makes it to the pick ban phase, that team wins. So really strong picks, uh, you know, overall, I like to see some of these, uh, some of these things. Oh, oh, oh. And one more thing. We talked about the Lulu, right? If it's not the Lulu, because obviously Lulu's not working uh, so far, let's see the karma and let's see the Yumi, man. Let's see it. I'm oh, telling you. Awful. <laughs> anyway, all right, that's all I have. stream here. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, all right, before we get into patch 11.13 that dropped today, we do want to share with everybody about our friends over at Gloop. If you have not gone to gloop.com, go to gloop.com. That's D W O O P.com. They have training games uh, for your students to participate in from things like visual reaction, uh, speed, visual memory. Uh, timing, uh, actors, it's just all sorts of really cool browser-based tools. So I'm going to throw that out there too. They're all browser-based, meaning your students can uh, be in the middle of class on their Chromebook and be playing on Gloop.com. Not that I'm promoting they should be ignoring their schoolwork, <laughs> but technically they could, okay? So it's browse time. Yeah, it's summer, yeah. whatever. Uh, so while they're in summer school, they could be on Gloop.com. But uh, <laughs> Gloop's got just some really cool tools and they're measurable. So that's another really cool thing so you can challenge your players to uh you know reach a certain uh, uh speed on their reaction timing uh increase their memory so it's all things that are measurable and they can take those tools and then compare them or those numbers compare them against other players i think i'm looking forward to the day where we can use things like this for measurable uh, data for college recruitment for esports. You know, like I have a really fast reaction speed, and they can promote that versus saying, "Here's my KDA and you know CS:GO or what have you." Right. So uh, you can you can throw all that out there. Anyways, that's not the purpose of this little plug here. I do want to share with everybody though that Gloop has an esports enablement grant that is available for you to apply for absolutely free. They have two different grants that they're giving away. One that's five thousand dollars, another that's two and a half thousand dollars. Only uh, academic esports teams and programs are eligible to apply. Uh, they also have a Logitech package, I believe they're giving out like a peripheral set uh, that you can win. So if you'd like more information on that, head over to gloop.com slash grant. Ronnie's jotting that down. Uh, so gloop.com slash grant. Tell them Rift Happens sent you. I'm sure they would love to hear it. So with that... Being said, let's switch over to patch 11.13 and let's talk about some of the changes that we have coming through. I think I hear myself coming through your uh, speakers there, Ronnie. Is that uh, oh, yeah. near you? Okay, here we go. So patch 11.13, <laughs> let's talk champion buffs first. We're going to breeze through these pretty quickly because there's there's so much in, in this patch that dropped today that I'm sure is going to impact CR picks for tonight because we just went through the data, right? We talked about all the data some of these things that are coming through in this patch are going to impact champion picks that we're going to be that are going to be happening tonight, Wednesday night, the 23rd, and tomorrow night, the 24th. Here are the buffs coming through. Aphelios getting a buff on his passive. Um, his you know obviously Aphelios only has two abilities, right? Uh, his Q and his Alt. So uh, he has passive uh, at other levels. He can upgrade. Uh, his passive stats. So uh, passive AD and a lethality increase. So Aphelios getting a nice buff there. Dr. Mundo, uh, I think Cannon Teach was the one that was saying he's terrible in the jungle. Because we we thought, I thought Cannon Teach, you said it too. Cannon Teach going to pilot Mundo in the jungle. And he even said in Discord, no, 
that's an awful champion in the jungle. Well, Cannon Teach, this buff is for you. The damage cap on monsters has been increased for his infected bone saw. So, so Cannon Teach, he's in chat right now. He's saying Mundo is so <laughs> bad. Look, they're so they're increasing the damage cap because that Q does percent damage, right? So uh, they're increasing the cap, and I think they're doubling it. I think uh, it's like 150 up to 300 now. Um, so, so he should have a much better clear, uh, but I don't know if that's enough. And, and you know, Cannon Teach is, is much more experienced on Mundo in the jungle than I am. But remember that that Q is is single target damage. It's not you know area you know AOE damage. So I'm not sure if it's really going to help him as much. But they're trying to buff him uh, in the jungle. So uh, Olaf has getting a, a very good buff actually. HP per level and his mana per five has been increased. So we may see, we we call for more Olaf. We saw some more Olaf. We may see even more Olaf now. And then rounding out the champion buffs for this patch is going to be Zaya. She's getting uh, increased damage on her Q. So per uh, damage per dagger has been increased. We may see some Zaya play. So Ronnie, any thoughts on champion buffs? Yeah. Uh, so a couple things, right? So the Mundo, uh, the main thing. So Cannon's calling it out in chat. It's absolutely right. The W change is what hurt Mundo in the jungle mm -hmm. the most because you no longer have the AOE kind of flames doing a bunch of the damage around you. It's a lot more difficult to kind of kite the camps and make sure to do consistent damage. Uh, the other thing that hurt Mundo jungle is the nerfs to Turbo Chem Tank because that's kind of what enabled him to be a jungler. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of engage otherwise, right? He kind of has to run up to you quickly, hit you with a Q to slow you, and then, yeah, it's really difficult to... to do that now that the the speed up is only 30 percent at max uh you know at its max so um i think those two things combined make it a lot harder for him to be able to jungle hopefully this is going to bring him a little more in line with what we saw before his rework because i love seeing mundo show up in the jungle uh but again to canon teacher's point man he should be doing this instead of me uh <laughs> olaf is the new mundo right uh, which is ironic yeah. because mundo is new he just got reworked and olaf is really old but olaf is the new mundo uh, yeah, he's he's going to start showing up, I think, as that kind of go-to, run you down, cue you to death type character. Uh, and that's that's exactly what Olaf likes to do. So I think we're going to see a lot more Olaf, probably still not a lot of Mundo. And then I think Zaya and Aphelios, that's great that they're getting buffed. And we'll probably see some, you know, pro play with those characters. But I don't know that we'll see a lot of it in Coach Rivals. That's just my, my take on it. Um, I don't think it's going to make much of an impact. Yeah, I'm with you. I like playing the Moon Boy here, but he, um, you know, it's there's a lot to juggling his his weapons, and he cha his play style evolves through the course of the game based on what guns are available to him. You know, he has Gravitum ready. Okay, jungler, come gank. I'm gonna root him and slow him. Um, he's got uh, Severum and uh, the Chakram. He's got the white and the red guns. Great. I want to get up close and personal, and I want to be in the in the middle of a team fight. He has the sniper rifle. He wants to play from a distance. So it's it can be difficult to kind of build a team around um, the Aphelios. I like the Zaya. I think uh, Zaya could see a little bit more play. Um, she's a very safe AD carry with some some self peel. Um, the da she already does pretty ridiculous damage, and uh, paired with a Rakan, uh, Zaya Rakan are very good together. When Zaya starts a W, uh, they can get some level one cheese kills uh, that way and just really overwhelm the opponent. But uh, I'm with you. I, I think uh, the buffs aren't enough for for Mundo, and Olaf is just going to see some more priority. So uh, let's move into the champion nerfs. Uh, these don't really impact CR that much because we these aren't picks that have really been out there, but just throwing it out there. Uh, Kindred, her attack speed per mark has been lowered. Um, so from 15% to 5%. So a, a pretty substantial uh, gutting on Kindred. Uh, Lee Sin has seen a surge in popularity in solo lanes. One of the reason being is because his E does so much stinking damage um, at early levels. Um, but they didn't uh, nerf that. They nerfed his damage at higher levels. So he's still going to be pretty strong early, but not do as much damage with his E uh, later on. So we'll see what kind of impact uh, that has. Uh, Riven 
Uh, her E shield amount lowered at all levels, so apparently she's been pretty oppressive in solo queue, not really seeing much competitive play, uh, but shield amount been lowered across the board uh, no matter what level her E is. And then Rumble, this is a really cool change because Rumble's been a really, um, uh, he's been a staple in the jungle ever since they made some, some tunings and some changes to him. So one of the cool things uh, about his kit, his W, which is a scrap shield, um, it was a flat uh, uh, cooldown on it so it was that i think six seconds or something like that and it gave him movement speed when he has it up so now what they've done for rumble is they gave him his w cooldown now scales per level so it starts off a high cooldown and the more you know points you put into his w the cooldown lowers so that's going to help bring him more in line instead of being a priority pick uh every single game and they uh decreased his movement speed so his clear is going to slow down a little bit because you pop the w and you you know kind of zoom through the jungle they slow that down so maybe that's going to bring rumble more in line we've only seen one rumble in coach rivals um maybe we won't see him again i don't know uh ronnie nurse what do you think yeah, I think you're right on. Uh, this isn't necessarily something that will have the biggest effect on our league. Kindred hasn't seen any presence. I don't think it's a champion that most people are, are playing. Uh, Lee Sin, you know, maybe was something that some of the teams were looking at. He's really difficult to play because of the mechanics with his ward hopping and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, I don't know that, that we're going to see much Lee Sin even without you know, a major nerf to his kit here. Uh, Riven's one of those characters that's like, if you're a one trick, you play it. And then if you're not, you pretty much never even glance at it. So I don't know that we're going to see a lot of Riven anyway. Um, but yeah, she's she's a really unique champion because the outplay potential is there. Uh, you know, if you put a couple thousand games into into that champion. But, uh, you know, again, not not a huge presence here, if, if any. And then, yeah, the one Rumble game we saw was really strong, uh, but he's a really tough champion to pilot. Uh, in my opinion, he's really more of a like a, a solo laner. But, uh, you know, the fact that he's gotten some love and, and attention in the jungle, nothing wrong with that. I just don't know that we're going to see a lot more of it. We've seen him once, probably all we're going to see uh, after these these changes. But, uh, you know, could be wrong. Maybe it's, maybe it's a big priority for some of these teams. Speaking of love in the jungle... Um... Yeah. Look, I'm getting wait. There's so many sound bites that people are gonna clip love from in this. The like <laughs> love in the jungle. What, can, what what is this podcast about? <laughs> Death cap for Tootie. Um yeah. <laughs> so uh Viego, uh sorry Hernandez teaches. Uh they're moving, they're trying to push Viego more towards the jungle and out of the lane. I, I believe uh, I remember the champion roadmap. I believe they were pushing him, they wanted him to be in the jungle. So a couple of adjustments there. Uh, his Q healing that he received from minions has been lowered, cut in half, actually. He was getting, I think, 100%. Now it's down to 50%. And then his E uh, the, is buffed in length and speed. So I think they're hoping that he's going to use that more for ganking uh, as opposed to using it to kind of dominate the lane. But Viego's just weird anyways. I, I really, I really, I, to me, I don't think it really matters where you put him. He's in team fights. He can be pretty much non-existent until that first kill comes through. And then he goes all in. Uh, takes the soul, gets a full ability reset, gets his health commit. He has invulnerability frames. I think there are a lot, a lot more adjustments they need to make to Viego uh, rather than just this. But that's just uh, a salty, you know, gold player speaking. <laughs> yeah, Viego's impressive, man. You're starting to see him at the pro level as soon as they unlocked him, uh, because yeah, he he gets. He gets advantages that other champions aren't afforded, right? He's he's able to be invulnerable for short periods of time every time there's a kill. I mean, at least like champions like Tristana who get like kill resets. Well, there's still like you can interrupt the jump. Uh, mm -hmm. Same thing with Kha'Zix, you know, very similar. His jump, he resets every time there's a kill. You can interrupt the jump, right? The fact that Viego gets the ability to jump over walls, uh, you know, or, or use it as kind of a gap closer and then gets a reset every time somebody dies feels really oppressive. And then you also get all the stats and all the gold and everything, right? So you can really be uh, uh, a menace. And we've seen it a few times here in Coach Rivals. Uh, not a few times, I'm sorry, just the one time uh, to this point. I believe it's only been played by Hernandez in the top lane. Uh, really strong game from him overall. I like seeing more of it. I want to see Viego in the jungle uh, just because I'm a jungle main. I like seeing more versatile uh, champions in that role. So I I'm all for it. But 
yeah, I can't wait to see it uh, busted out here in Coach Rivals in the jungle at some point. All right, and then we move into a huge change. One of the huge changes. We have three huge changes for this patch. Uh, the Kench has been unbenched on patch 11.13, a mini rework for Tom Kench. His, uh, there are several changes. His Q does heal him when he hits it now. I didn't include that aside because the biggest thing with Tom Kench is his W and his R being swapped. We talked about this uh, in depth more on the previous episode, episode two. So we could just touch on it very briefly for those of you that, that missed it. Uh, but basically his ult is now switched over to his W. It's abyssal dive. He dives down and then reappears at a target location. That is a 21 second cooldown. And when he appears, he is going to knock up all enemies in, an, in the area for one second. Uh, if he does hit an enemy, it refunds 30% of the cooldown and the mana cost. So Tom Kench is going to be doing a lot of diving i mean you think a 30 percent uh reduction on that what goes into 21 three times what's that seven so he gets seven seconds refunded at level one if he hits somebody with his w uh the range has been gutted a little bit but even still i see this this tom Kench going you know diving and come back up a lot as opposed to what we've what we've previously seen and then his devour has been moved over to his r his ultimate now and that is on a two minute cooldown so he cannot just sit in a lane with senna or or avaris and devour them when they're in trouble every single time i mean now you you can only get it's a it's two minutes and that's that's all you get um so really interesting change we're gonna see a lot more playmaking i feel like out of Tom Kench moving forward. Uh, Ryan, do you think we're going to see some some TK this week? I hope so. Tom Kench is such a weird champion. And my take last week was that this is going to turn him into more of a kind of tank style supporter. I think I was completely wrong. And my new take, right, after doing a little more research, Tom Kench is, you know, now a lot of the patch is live, right? So people are actually getting to play it now. My opinion has flipped a little bit, and I think what Riot has done is they've actually decided Tom Kench is going to be a solo laner. And what, the reason I think that is because the Devour timer is so long, you're mm -hmm. never going to get to use it in an impactful way in the dual lane, right? It's really more of like, okay, we're about to get into a team fight, save it for the fight, get, get the ADC out of trouble, or whoever is in trouble, get them out of there, you know, use the W to engage. You're really more of like a beefy top lane kind of tank style uh cc bot right so that's that's i think what the direction is now and with some of the new items coming through in this patch as well i think tom kench really could see um some play even at you know even at our level here at coach rivals even though it's going to take you know teams a couple of weeks maybe to get the hang of his his uh, uh moved around abilities and stuff I think honestly, it's it's a strong pick if uh, in the right hands, and I'd love to see it played top lane or even you know support. I think it still works. It's just not it's not what it was, right? The whole thing with Tom Kench is you can kind of troll your enemies by taking away the ability to take out the ADC, get them to safety no matter what. And I think that's kind of what Riot wanted to get rid of was because it's not very fun to interact with. It's not very fun to watch. So. The idea is, all right, let's just get him out of the role. Let's put him somewhere else. And and the uh, flipping these abilities, I think, might accomplish that. Yeah. Very cool. I, I think that we could potentially see him in the jungle. Um, I think that would be interesting. Um, you don't get to use the Devour as much, but if you you, know, you have a support, uh, maybe like a kill lane support, like a Pike or something like that, that can, uh, or even like a Pantheon, uh, when when they're in a good position in the lane where maybe they're even pushed up or your ADC can farm safely under tower, you uh, he can roam up to the the Tom Kench and while Tom Kench is, you know, in the jungle. And then all of a sudden you have two champions appear in the middle of your lane. Um, you know, and then all of a sudden a one V one is a three V one just like that. I mean, so, uh, I don't see in the tool tip, uh, the channel time for that. It just says he dives down and then reappears at a target location. So that could be something to look at too. How long, uh, how much of an indicator do you get before Tom Kench and his teammate, you know, pops up 
there. So I don't know. I, I, I think uh, we'll have to see how it plays out and we'll keep our fingers crossed that maybe somebody will break him out and show us how it's done. <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> All right, new items. We have two new items. We did talk a bit about these a lot in episode two, but they did ship this patch. We have the Hole Breaker, which is built for split pushing. Uh, it is replacing Sanguine Blade, uh, that item that you never built. And we have uh, Anatomous Chains, which is going to be more of um, kind of a, uh, you know, the, the single like hard carry killer. Uh, for it. So Hullbreaker, more for the split pusher, the, the passive there, boarding party, when none of your allied champions are nearby, uh, you gain 20 to 45 armor and magic resist, you become tankier, and you do 20% increased damage to towers, and then nearby large minions also gain armor and magic resist, and then they do 200% increased damage to towers. So this is a great item for stacking up uh, a double wave of cannons, and then you know slow pushing and then getting right in the right on that tower and you're just going to absolutely uh shred them uh and then moving into so that's going to unlock some champion picks we'll talk about that here in just a second um anathema's chains this is for tanks to uh bind to the enemy champion that they feel like is probably the biggest threat so you choose a nemesis on the other team other team once you choose them over the next 60 seconds, you gain Vendetta stacks. Uh, those stacks allow you to take up to 30% reduced damage from the nemesis that you've chosen. And then anytime you are near that champion, uh, they have 20% reduced tenacity. So I see chat already calling it out. This Anathema's Chains is what the teams needed to build into the Jinx that got carried away and the vein that got carried away. So Will Win and Daddy Kai, uh, had this item already been in the game, we would have seen uh, the enemy teams build the build uh, Anathema's Chains into them because it's this is a soul hyper carry. So uh, I think Riot's trying to get away from that. I think that could be a very frustrating part of solo queue, not so much in you know full-blown 5v5 organized teams, but in solo queue, Having that one champion that can absolutely just run away with a game when they get a lead, this item is gonna is built to kind of give you a, a fighting chance against them. Uh, so, any predictions? I know we talked about them before, but what else you got for us uh, for these two new items? Yeah, I think you're gonna see a lot of Yorick in patch 11.13, yep. specifically because of the hole breaker. You're gonna see a lot of split push champions uh, really come into favor. And yeah, an Anthemus Chains, I like your take, right? You pick somebody on the enemy team who you think is going to be an issue, and now they have to do 30% more work in order to be a problem because you're just negating a lot of that damage. Uh, true damage, I think, still applies normally. So those, uh, those vein bolts, the third bolt is still going to hurt, right? You're still going to have to deal with uh, like sets, haymaker, Right, if you get it in the middle, that's still true damage, and uh, I don't believe an Anthemus chains negates any true damage. But uh, other than that, yeah, it's a really powerful tool to kind of get rid of uh, enemy team, you know, AD threats, you know, whatever it may be, whoever you don't want to deal with, it's going to help quite a bit. Coach Magros in chat is calling them the vein stopper chains. Yeah, so, oh, that's uh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, moving on. So we did talk about this a little bit more in-depth in the previous episode. I'm with you. We're definitely going to see some York. Uh, people should be practicing the York, York and Holebreaker. Uh, absolutely busted uh, at Trundle as well. Um, this patch also saw uh, sweeping changes to movement speed. A ton of movement speed nerfs. They, they uh, riot um, a few seasons too late acknowledging that there's some mobility creep in the game uh, that's taking place and champion, or, or you know, Items are getting like way too fast. Champions are moving way too quickly. Um, so we saw those nerfs. And in addition to that, we saw some buffs to some of the AP Mage items. And I'm not sure, um, you know, um, chat could probably correct me here. I think this could be in response to the rise of um, more kind of like assassins in solo queue, assassin mid laners in solo queue. So they buffed some of the mid lane mage items here, or even solo lane mage items rather. Um, Moonstone Renewer had heal and shield power increase. So your enchanter supports would really love that. Even enchanter mids, Karma's, Lulu's, Janna, Soraka, we really like uh, this patch. Leandri's Anguish, Luden's Tempest, Everfrost all had price reductions. They're all about 
250 gold cheaper, I think. So um, champions that like to run those will be able to complete their mythic uh, much more quickly. And then Black Cleaver had a buff with a health increase. So uh, overall, just some system tuning there. Nothing too crazy to talk about. Um, looking at the item nerfs, this is where we have some of the movement changes coming through um, as well. Shirelia's Battle Song had its active move speed drop. So Shirelia's Battle Song used to, as soon as you popped it, your whole team or everybody near you got the 60% movement speed increase and then it decayed down to 30. Now it's just a flat 30% move speed. Uh, so with the Rumble nerfs coming in, we also had a Shirelia's nerf. So I don't know if that's really going to have much of an impact. Uh, Divine Sunderer, this is going to affect Ezreal. We talked about him. He's had a big presence in, in CR. He was one of our our champions with over 50% uh, PB presence in the league. Uh, but Divine Sunderer, the, uh, for ranged champions, it's a reduction from 12% uh, of the enemy's HP damage down to 9%. So Edgel's going to be uh, a lot less oppressive in those matches, but I don't think it's enough to really take Ezreal out of any sort of meta. I think Ezreal's always going to be relevant just because of how safe he is. Uh, Gale Force had movement speed lowered, and uh, Prowler's Claw... This change coming through, hits its cooldown is increased, but now Prowler's Claw can only target champions instead of any enemy because previously you could Prowler's Claw through minions to like reposition, and I think it allowed uh, players to play a little too safely uh, at times. Uh, so now you can only target champions with those instead of dashing you know, through enemy minions to uh, avoid some sort of uh, skill shot. Yeah, I love seeing the uh, movement speed reduction a little bit. I think, yeah, fine, to your point, it's a little too little, a little too late at this point from Riot, but it's good to see that they're at least addressing the issue um, because, yeah, I mean, there is a little bit too much as far as like, oh, I can get over a wall and now I can also, you know, I get this huge uh, movement speed buff and I'm able to get out of any danger. And There's really no counterplay for something like that, so... It's good to see that uh, you know that they're at least making it a little more balanced with some of these things. I joked a little bit. I don't think enough people were building Shirelias, and the ones that were were kind of abusing it because you're you basically got you know not like a free win, but you know you're you're able to kind of have a much easier time with these team games whenever you're able to buff up your whole team. So uh, you know seeing that go from sixty to thirty percent flat kind of stinks. Um, I don't know that we'll see it much because we weren't seeing it much already, but uh, it's still a really powerful item in my opinion. So hopefully it doesn't get, uh, it doesn't get taken too far down a priority because uh, you know, a playmaking uh, item like that, you always like to see it uh, active, but uh, you know, maybe not as active now. Uh, we have some item adjustments coming through. Trinity Force had its move move speed on hit lowered, AD increased to compensate for that. Lich Bane had its move speed lowered, AP increased to compensate for that. And then Dead Man's had its max move speed lowered, charge time decreased. So uh, Dead Man's Plate used to take eight seconds to charge. Now it's dropped down to four seconds, but that maximum move speed is lowered. Um, so here we get into some more of those movement speed adjustments. Cosmic Drive. Movement speed now a flat 20 versus scaling movement speed. And then uh, AP on that was increased. Stridebreaker, the other big change here. We'll talk about Stridebreaker for a second. So Stridebreaker had the da has had the dash removed from it. So we, we talked about Nocturne earlier. Nocturne being so oppressive. Nocturne typically built Str Stridebreaker. But with Stridebreaker nerfs coming through, we'll see how that impacts Nocturne. It just allows Nocturne to, or it removes the dash. Um, but as I was, I was playing with some uh, some coaches yesterday, one of the comments mentioned was it's not really going to impact those champions that already have gap closers, right? Nocturne, or yeah, Nocturne has a gap close. He ults on you, he fears you, and you know as long as he tags you with his Q, he gets additional movement speed to chase you down. So how much of the stride breaker was used for for gap closing, um, you know, in Nocturne's kit? as opposed to using it to maybe like your dash. I've also seen it where he'll dash in and then he'll stride breaker out um, more for escape, not so much a gap close. So just little things like that, but interesting things coming through could impact top lane. I think it could impact set. We may see that impact uh, some of our set players on coach diff um, may, you know, 
mix up their champion pool or, or maybe find another mythic but um it does still allow you to cast the slow um the slow is increased it is a huge slow it allows you to cast it while you're moving so champions that have a dash that would typically use strawbreaker can now dash and then do an even stronger slow on those champions and be even more sticky i guess you could say um in uh in those types of situations yeah, I was surprised to see the stride breaker dash get taken away because they've they've adjusted it a couple of times. Like they've lengthened it, shortened it, right? And it was I think it was a really small, like a hundred units or something. It wasn't anything crazy. Um, so yeah, to your point, I don't know that it's going to make a massive difference having the dash removed. But again, I like seeing just a little bit of this uh, movement speed or you know like. Uh, uh, just general kind of like over tuning of, of being able to kind of get in and out. I like, I like that riots dialing that back a little bit. So uh, it's a welcome change for me. Cool. Item adjustments. Last one, uh, death stance heal on champion takedown has been increased and the movement speed on takedown removed. Just another one of those movement, uh, sweeping changes that they've made, uh, across everything. And then we also have Nimbus cloak getting uh, a nerf, the movement speed lowered at higher level. We don't really see runes get uh, touched too much from in the patch notes. So we have two this patch. So Nimbus cloak, uh, that is the one that grants you movement speed whenever you cast a summoner spell. It was great for um, 80 carries. So every time you cast flash or heal, you also got the movement speed to get away or to help chase. So I really liked uh, that rune selection. Uh, ghost Poro for our support mains out there. Uh, the duration of each Ghost Poro has been increased. And when it reveals an enemy, the reveal duration has been increased. So Ghost Poro getting a, a well-welcomed uh, buff. I'm sure supports are going to love that. Yeah, it's pretty overdue. Uh, it's really not something anyone runs anymore. So seeing now that, uh, you know, the Poro is going to last for 90 seconds instead of 60, that's a huge buff, 50% duration increase. And uh, the reveal duration also increasing, meaning uh, like if someone does walk across the area, now you're going to get vision on that area to see if any other allies from that team are also coming through, gives you a little more knowledge and makes it a little more valuable. And with such a high emphasis on vision, right, in a team game like this, uh, maybe you're going to start to see a little bit more, uh, you know, some some support champions are going to want to build more towards that. So I like to see it and, uh, you know, kudos to Riot for addressing it because it, it definitely wasn't being used much. And finally, that brings us to our week four matches. We actually have a banger lined up for tonight uh and i did get notice from coop coop can correct me i think he was in chad he looks like he may still be there um but i believe the match tonight is being streamed right here on twitch.tv slash coach rivals so you can tune in tonight for uh team just good enough versus team tragedy they are both sitting undefeated in that two-way tie for third uh, head to head. So one of them is going to break that. Well, they're both going to break the tie, but it's going to depend on whether they move up or down. Uh, but they could be in that, that, that coveted, uh, two way tie first place with coach diff at three and Oh, uh, follow that up with pointed out in chat earlier in versus spawn of Baron, both sitting at Oh, and three, one of these teams is no longer going to be, uh, winless after tomorrow so that's tomorrow night follow that up with death cat for cutie versus team coach diff coach diff coming in very strong the undefeated team in the league right now sitting at three and oh death cat for cutie looking for a bounce back week they they lost both of their games this week sub 25 minutes so that is is definitely tough to deal with uh it's something that's hard to bounce back from but i've played with enough players on their team that i know they can do it um and but they they've got a, a tough challenge there in coach diff and then we wrap up tomorrow night with hotline ping versus just good enough and there's a little asterisk next to jge's record because they could be three and oh at that point or two and one at that point uh we'll have to find out after tonight so uh ronnie any of these matches you're particularly looking forward to seeing yeah i think the one at the top and the one at the bottom are, for me uh are are both going to be huge matches right they're going to tell us a lot about uh you know the way the rest of the season may end up going 
You got just good enough who's put a really good couple of games together. And this is uh, going to be probably their toughest challenge here in tonight's match against Team Tragedy. You guys really been stepping up and and uh, really could go either way, right? That's that's uh, I couldn't even predict which team is going to come out with that one. Uh, and then the one at the bottom, Hotline Ping, JGE again. These guys back to back really tough opponents to win opponents uh, in both of their matches. So they're really going to have to dig deep in order to get these wins. These these back to back games, one tonight, one tomorrow. Uh, these guys really got their work cut out for them, and it's going to be a lot of fun to watch both of those. Uh, but really, I'm, I'm excited about every match this week, of course. Awesome, I am too. I'm, de I'm definitely excited for tonight uh, for us to be playing. If you, if you like uh, great uh, jungle v jungle uh, combat, there we have two really strong junglers playing tonight. Casey the Knight uh, for just good enough for JGE, and then Eric Twenty Nine over for tragedy so uh definitely gonna be interesting uh to watch that and see how it plays out um but that's gonna do it for us thank you so much for tuning in and attending our first ever live stream of rift happens uh episode three i know we went a little long we had so many matches to get through uh hopefully that i didn't keep uh, ronnie from uh <laughs> doing anything important <laughs> I got nothing uh, better to do, man. This is great. <laughs> awesome. So thank you so much for being with us. Be sure to tune in to our match tonight of JGE versus Team Tragedy over at twitch.tv slash Coach Rivals. And if you miss those matches, you can catch them on YouTube at our YouTube channel, Coach Rivals, also the same channel name. And then tomorrow night, which is Thursday night, the 24th, we have three matches coming at you also on the Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Coach Rivals. Those matches are all probably happening at the same time, but I believe... Immortals versus Spawn of Baron is the one that's being streamed. So uh, if people really want to see that, that is definitely one uh, to, to keep an eye on and, and look out for. One of these teams is going to end up with a win, and they're both hungry for it. So again, thank you so much for being with us. I'd like to thank again my uh, invaluable co-host there, uh, Ronnie B. Ronnie, thank you so much for being here with us for our first live production of Rift Happens uh and yeah that's gonna do it for us so thanks for being here yeah thanks so much everybody this has been a lot of fun love seeing everybody in the chat see you guys next time